Hello everyone and welcome back for the computer class. In previous session, we have already started lesson number three, algorithm and flowchart. So in this lesson, the points which we are going to cover are what is algorithm, advantages of algorithm, what is flowchart, advantages of flowchart, limitation of flowchart and converting an algorithm to a flowchart. So these are all the points which we are going to cover. Uh, already we have uh, learned few points from this that is what is an algorithm and flowchart the intro we have learned with one example like what engineers do before constructing any building engineers used to draw a structure of that building or sketch of that building to understand how building will look like the same way we need to create a algorithm to understand how our program will work okay so this we have learned the definition in previous class of algorithm so this is a definition and uh, we have taken some examples we have learned a few examples of algorithm and you have practiced also and today we are going to cover how to uh, make flow charts so basic things so this is an algorithm steps we have learned previous session so also we have learned how we can add two numbers and how we can write the algorithm for that addition of two numbers. So we have written like type first number, then second step type second number, then third step add the numbers and fourth display the result such way. So here we need to add one more step that is first step to start and last steps to end. Okay. So advantages of algorithm also we have learned. Now let's learn in today's session. In today's session, most probably we are going to cover this. What is flow chart and advantages of flow chart? Limitation of flow chart. So today, most probably we will learn about flow chart advantage as well as limitation also. And then converting an algorithm to flow charts also. So let's begin with what is flow charts. So flow chart is an graphical representation of step of an algorithm it is a set of different types of boxes and symbols that are connected with arrows and flow lines in simple in short if you want to understand what is flowchart so flowchart is a pictorial form of algorithm algorithm we are writing steps okay it is in written form but flowchart is a picture form why to do so so take an one example few example uh, now you can see on the screen so I, I hope you can guess easily what is the symbol of this this is a dangerous sign so by looking at this picture uh, most probably we can see on the where is the electronic dps and all there we can see this symbol so if this symbol is there then we will not go close to that particular place okay we will be a site okay we will not go in that direction why because these symbols uh, symbolize that it is dangerous right same way one more symbol this is easily you can understand by this picture this emoticon is happy one more this emoticon is sad so these pictures there is no word now there is no spellings and no written things nothing is there but still we can understand by pictures and by one look okay when you want to read any word you need to take some time but when you see any pictures, you understand it very quick and very easy as so for a long time. So that's why the flowchart algorithms are converted into flowcharts. So different type of boxes which are used as a symbol in a flowcharts are this picture and this table is given already in your textbooks. Please refer it. This is very important. So let's start from the first sign, first symbol. The first symbol name is start and stop box. This symbol is compulsorily used in each and every chart to indicate the start of the flow chart and end of the program. So in the beginning as well as in the end, it would be used. Okay. Then second symbol here, you can see the mouse pointer. The second symbol, it is used as an input and output box. When you want to do some input, also, when you want to use as an output, you have to use this box. Then next is a process box. This is a rectangle represent the 
process when any uh, process takes like for example we have taken the algorithm last time addition of two numbers so addition of two numbers how we will do input we can use the second box this one for input then we do addition okay we will add number one and number two that time we will do this we will use for processing this box again for the output again this box so by examples you will understand clearly in further process i'll show you that now next is this arrow four directional arrows are there left right up down so this four directional shows that which way the flow chart is flowing downward upward left side right side so that direction is denoted by this flow lines now the next one is decision box sometimes in some programs we need to take decision that time this decision box is used so that steps we need, we can show in the decision box and the last one is the connector suppose you are drawing a flow chart and it is quite big and it will ship to next page it is not enough one page is not enough to draw a flow chart that time we will use multiple pages more than one page so when you want to switch to the next page you have you want to show the connection this flow charts are connected to each other then you can use this circle okay this circle you can use as a connector it will show the connectivity of the flow chart okay we can join two flow chart with the help of this connector so here we comes again one small recap of this page first one is start box second one is input output box third one is process box fourth one is flow lines then decision box and connectors so this is very important you should know and if you know the proper way these boxes then only you you can draw you can convert algorithm into flowchart properly and if you will convert properly then only by look one look you will understand how the program will work okay so let's move to the next page <clears throat> now let's understand by one example previously we have learned how we can write the algorithm for this okay if you want to do addition of two numbers so first step here i have made some changes and you also please remember these steps first step always it will be start the algorithm will start with the start word and it will end with the stop word okay so the second step will be we will type first number and second number in previous algorithm we have learned one by one add number one add number two but here i have taken all together add first number and then second number add numbers then what we will do addition of those numbers so this is an process then display the result so this is an output so let's see here it started then it is taking the input here we will type into computer two numbers that is means we will input into computer here computer will work for us computer will think computer will process for us and it will add the numbers after doing process it will show us the output so this is display the result is output at last our program will stop first step is start last step is stop compulsorily in each and every algorithm you have to write these steps first step start second step uh, last step stop let's understand how can we draw the flow chart with the help of this algorithm so as we know the first we will use the this oval shape for the start and end so this is start and that we have written the first step start second one is second one is input box in that we will write type numbers 1 and 2 then third we will take processing box in that we will write add numbers then fourth we will take again input output box that is for output display the answers and last we will do stop so first start and last stop in between this is input box where we will type two numbers this is processing box here computer will do process and it will show the result so for showing the result we will use input output box 
here it is used as an input box here it is used as a output box and how the program is flow flowing the programming is flowing from top to down so these flow lines we have used here i hope you got it what i have said okay so this is an one simple algorithm and flow chart to do addition of two numbers got it so we'll go for some more example with before that we will learn advantages of flow chart so let's understand the advantage of flow chart first a flow charts are better way of communicating the logic of solution to a problem in any uh, you, if you want to make any program so that is one problem and you want to make a solution in the software so how you can do it first you have to write algorithm and then flow chart so flow chart is a better way because it is a picture form as i shown you the dangerous picture smile picture sad picture you understand quick isn't it so that's way if you will draw flow chart so you can understand the program how program will work easily with the help of flow chart a problem can be analyzed in more effective way just now i said so we can analyze the problem also easy way number 3 program flow charts serves as a good program documentation also it is used as a good document okay fourth a flow chart helps in debugging process that means to remove the errors debugging means to remove the errors okay Uh, when we make any program so there is chance we will make some mistakes so to identify that mistake what is a mistake or to rectify that mistake chart flow chart flow chart would be a very helpful tool or very helpful process okay so these are the advantages of flow chart i hope you understood till now what i have explained as it has the advantages same time it has some limitation also the flow chart has some limitations one sometimes that program logic is quite complicated in that case a flow chart becomes complex and clumsy if some structure a program is critical so that time how to draw the flow chart and how it will be work out so that time we need to scratch our head little more okay it will make us some disturbance okay it will not be easy to draw always the flow chart but most probably when you will draw it will make clear second if alteration are required the flow chart may require redrawing completely when if any changes you want to do in flow chart if a very uh, miss uh, uh, unexpected mistake is that so we need to draw the flow chart <clears throat> again and that will take a quite long time that will take quite long time so this is an disadvantage of flow chart as the flow chart symbol cannot be typed reproduction of flow chart become problem okay we cannot type so we need to draw it okay so again and again if you want to make it so it would be little difficult but overall these are the limitation but overall if you will see the flow chart gives a quick look for your program so that is good to use for making programs before making the programs algorithm and flow chart now we will move to the last part of the lesson that is converting an algorithm into a flow chart already we have taken one example here we are going to take more examples how to convert algorithm to the flow chart so in textbook it is given one algorithm like how we can do sum of three numbers so first it will show algorithm start then input three numbers x y and z then third it will do the process calculate the sum of three numbers x y z then fourth step of algorithm is print the sum this is the output and last step is stop you can see here start and stop these steps are in algorithm is very compulsory okay so, and that in between you have to write the another steps so let's see the flow chart of this here it starts with the help of in this start and stop box this is an input box so here we have given input three numbers x y and z then here this is an process box rectangle box is an process box here it will do sum 
again here is input and output box uses for the next step print sum and here it gets stop so this is one example you can go through from your books there is one more example in your book to do multiplication of two numbers so almost flowchart symbol would be same only writing algorithm will be a little different got it so here is an algorithm start second step input the length and breadth of a rectangle so here enter the length and breadth of rectangle then it will calculate the area so area is calculated and print the area so these are the algorithm step so let's understand by flow chart this is start and stop box here it is written start here input output box in as a input here it is used input l and b here it will do process area is equal to l and b and then it will print the area output and then it will stop and it is flowing downward so these flow lines are used now once again take can one more example okay so here we are going to take a pi of that area so same as given this input start input process output stop start input process output stop so you just need more maximum in program input process output input process output start and stop so this will be most commonly the structure of flow chart but in case some logical changes are there where you want to take a decision there your structure of the flow chart will get changed so here we are going to understand the loop okay the last topic of the lesson is loop what is a loop it has a purpose to repeat one or more statement a certain number of times of until a condition is fulfilled while using a loop you need to a counter or counter is a variable that is used to used to count the numbers of time a procedure is being repeated so loop means if in any program you want to repeat particular task until you are not meeting a condition for example uh, in school when you want to get pass you need a minimum like 10 standard students they need minimum 35 marks to get pass okay so we want to keep a loop like when students will get 35 then only it should pass so computer will check this again and again again and again till student is not getting 35 or if you want to make a table of number any number like two's table three table so like two ones are two two twos are four two threes are six so till we are not counting till the 20 so program should calculate automatically or should make the pro table automatically so that repetition addition of two numbers it will add two then two plus two four four then again it should add two till we are not getting 20. what is the last step we should get 20 and till that time computer should repeat the addition of two plus two plus two plus two plus like that so in that case we need to use loop so you will understand better way by with the example okay so that example we will explain you again so loop is an use for the repetition loop is used for the repetition so here we completed the lesson and soon i'll share with you the exercise work so by the time keep watching okay so dear students here we have one example in your textbook of loop okay so let's take to print the names 10 times any names we want to print 10 times okay so how we will make the flow chart for that as usual first step will be start then second it will ask us for an input to input a name so when we will we'll type there the name then it will count number one okay then it will check the processing it will check the condition what it will check it will check the condition what is the condition this is condition box so it will check 
number should be greater than or equal to 10. What we have entered here, it should repeat 10 times. Okay, equal to 10. So till we are not, it is not printed 10 times, it will repeat. How it will repeat? First time it will type, then it will check 10 times over or not. If it is yes, okay. So we have it will check and it will go to the again number one is equal to number one. Then it will go to this flow and it will repeat the steps, repeat, repeat, repeat. When it is okay, then it will go to stop. Okay, it will check less than or equal to 10. What it will check less than equal to 10. If it is less than 10, yes, then it will repeat the step. If it is okay. 10 okay then it will go to stop such way it will repeat until you are not meeting to a particular condition which we have given to it so till it will rip so such way we can prepare uh, algorithm and flowchart with the loop also so dear students in today's video we have learned what is flowchart advantage of flowchart limitation of flowchart also, we have learned how to convert an algorithm to a flowchart and the loop. So these points we have covered. Please watch this video again and again and read the lesson. Also, practice the flowchart which is given in your textbooks. So see you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.